capital responsibility and should be treated with great respect. I started to think about that statement and I thought about, I agree with that wholeheartedly, but oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see that capital has a very low barrier to entry. And a lot of times now access to capital is very easy. It's very low. And I started asking myself, well, why is that? Typically, right, it's because it is a trap. And I think that a lot of young individuals get trapped, right, by this ease of access to capital, whether it's through credit cards or whatever else. And again, it's def- it's shifting or defining the way they think about money. And so, again, that falls on the responsibility of a parent, right? And before someone hits 18 and you've got all these companies out there vying for their attention and giving them free money, is you got to teach them how to manage it is because the access to capital is a double-edged sword, right? It could be a huge benefit to somebody if they understand it, but man, it could also be a huge detriment to uh, what they're trying to achieve and uh, eventually to financial failure. So uh, that's the first thought I had. Um, the other one was in here, right below it. He says, when you have a large amount of cash mm. on hand, all sorts of good opportunities will appear. When you have, all right, uh, when you have large amounts of cash, you will be uh, surprised at the opportunities that will find you. Uh, I went and looked this up. This is a phenomenon, right? This is called the Bader Meinhof phenomenon. It's a cognitive bias. For certain opportunities that you become aware of, most often you'll see this. If you haven't experienced it with cash or capital, you'll experience when you buy a new car. If you've ever went and bought a new car and you start driving home from the lot, all of a sudden you're going to see 50 of the same car that you just bought. You're like, where the heck was this? I didn't see any of these before. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's an example of kind of that. Uh, I, I can give you another example of a client. Uh, we had a text exchange. I think I shared this on a previous uh, a podcast where they've been very successful. They're sitting on cash. The idea was, hey, let's take a break after this investment. And then, bang, they started to see opportunities. And they're like, man, I can't just sit around. There's too much to be done here. There's mm-hmm. so many opportunities. I don't know which one to do. And a lot of times that is kind of a, a trademark with a lot of our clients, to be honest, is that, man, they've, they don't have problems with deal flow. Typically, the issue is, hey, how do I vet this opportunity that I want to do? And so, again, guys, we're here available for you guys. If you guys have that problem, feel free to reach out. Uh, We're happy to help work through some of that with you. Um, And then, Anthony, even more, Hmm. even more, I got to say, for the longest time, I've always said that my favorite quote in this book was one. Do you remember what I've said? If you know what's going on, you know. If you know what's happening, you know what to do. Exactly. I've got a new one. Mm. I've got a new one. On page 31, I was reading this section on page 31. Right in the middle of this page, there's a short sentence, and it says, it is not a numbers game. Man, I loved that quote, and I don't think I've seen it before. And what he does afterwards is he just kind of follows it up with example after example. And this is where he transitions later in the book about kind of giving numbers. But he starts off with telling us, guys, this isn't a numbers game, right? This is all about kind of our mental mindset and our approach to personal finance. And if we can overcome that, we're going to be successful. But it's not easy. And in fact, that's what we're doing is we're going through these five human factors that we've got to overcome to be successful. And so that right there, page 31, is it's not a numbers game is in fact my new favorite quote from this book. You want to see the entire episode? Click here. If you want to learn how investors use infinite banking to increase their returns and lower their taxes, click here. If you want to see if infinite banking is for you and you have some questions, hop on a discovery call with us and one of our coaches. The link for that will be in the description.